Okay, we've defined g of x to be this product of two functions, basically. We have a big set of parentheses. I'm going to constitute that as our first function, f, and then I'm going to call g that e to the x part afterwards. So we have a product of two functions. I'm not going to bother distributing here. Instead, what I'm going to do is think of this as using the product rule to find the derivative. So to do that, let's map out a plan. We're going to take the derivative of the first function and then multiply that by leaving the second function alone. And I'm just kind of mapping this out. Then to that, we're going to add, we're going to leave the first function alone and multiply that by the derivative of our second function. So now that we have a plan in place, let's go ahead and one at a time sort of take our derivatives. So the first function, what I'm calling f, is that big set of parentheses. We're going to use the power rule to take derivatives along the way here. So one term at a time here, we have 2x to the third power. The power rule says the 3 can come down in front and get multiplied by the 2. That'll give us a 6. Then we reduce the exponent by 1. So we do 3 minus 1 makes 2 for our new exponent. Plus the derivative of 4x, that's linear, so it's just going to be the constant out in front. And then plus 0, or we could leave that off, right? The derivative of a constant is going to be 0 there for the 5. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that off. I'm going to erase it and come back to we want to next multiply by whatever g is. Well, in our case, I've labeled g to be e to the x. It's going to be multiplied after our big set of parentheses. Plus, next we want to copy down f. So that was the first set of parentheses, the 2x to the third power plus 4x plus 5 gets copied down for our f. Multiplied by the derivative of g is going to be e to the x power, because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Okay, from here we could do a little bit of simplifying down if we wanted to. Um, what I notice is we do have an e to the x in both of these. Now we could distribute that first and then factor it all out. But what I'm going to suggest is let's go ahead and factor out an e to the x just to try to clean this up a little bit. What's going to be left is, well, we have our 6x squared plus 4 from the first set of parentheses plus 2x cubed, plus 4x plus 5 from that second set of parentheses. We can do just a little bit of cleaning up here if we wanted to. I'm going to put this in descending order, noticing that we have 2x to the third power is our highest power of x. So that's taken care of. Our next highest power of x, we have 6x squared. Positive 6x squared. We have x to the first power here with plus 4x. And then finally, we have some constants. We have 4 plus 5 more is going to make plus 9 here at the end. I'm not going to worry if we could factor any further than this. I'm just going to leave it as is and say, good solution. Let's move on to the next problem. Um, in fact, factoring out the e to the x normally not required when doing this type of problem. Mostly what we're testing you on is, do you understand the product rule and how to take a few of these derivatives? So if this helps out, good luck as you're working on product rule power rule and taking derivatives of e to the x.